Well, good evening and welcome to the 7 o'clock talk. We are at our favorite Mexican restaurant, Luciano's in Columbus. They have the absolute best guacamole. They make it fresh, big chunks. But what we have found is, is this doesn't, they make their chips, they do all of that stuff. It doesn't hurt her stomach. It doesn't cause problems. And that falls kind of right into uh, line with <clears throat> talking about food sensitivity testing. And what, I mean, when you were wearing your constant glucose monitor, what did you find at this place? Didn't do anything. Barely bumped my blood sugar. So for her... Of course, now I, I have a taco salad, but I never, I won't eat the flour shell. But it didn't matter because even when I got nachos, with, I always have... Well, they make their nachos like a, a taco salad. Never did anything. And so, that has always been a challenge, especially in the functional medicine world, is showing people that they're sensitive. And that's always been a pet peeve of mine with functional medicine testing, is food sensitivity testing is horribly inaccurate. If you have a leaky gut when you start out this process, then what happens? <clears throat> we are allergic to everything. And how did your food sensitivity test when we first did that? How did that come back? I think I had like twenty five. <laughs> and so and I had like three, like actual, like they were like severe. And so, when you do food sensitivity testing and everything comes back positive, then you probably have leaky gut and you probably just wasted about, I don't know, food sensitivity tests are anywhere from 500 for a small panel to 1000 to $1,500. <clears throat> and so that has always, always, always been a pet peeve of mine. Okay. Everything's yes, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. And what we actually just discovered we went to a, a metagenic seminar this weekend and they were talking about uh, food sensitivity testing and it was an MD talking about food sensitivity testing so when an MD talks about food sensitivity testing I, I generally kind of start to tune it out um, because most MDs don't have a tremendous amount of experience with food sensitivity testing. And then he started talking about the lymphocytes and he started talking about the immune response. And that actually piqued my interest quite a bit more. And so we actually have brought in a new test that will hopefully help us with, well, it'll make it'll make us more efficient because typically we start everything by doing the elimination diet and we're going to be able to refine that quite a bit. And this is a true immune response. This is not IgG testing, which is what most food sensitivity tests are. What do you think of the presentation this week? I thought it was pretty good. Um, I was going to say, is he... If you, if you can kind of, if you wanted to skip the elimination diet, because the elimination diet was truly just one that is, was, is meant to teach you how food and you react together. It's supposed to teach you more about you and what's good and bad for you. I mean, I don't know that I would take the whole diet away, but it could make it more efficient if you knew that you were sensitive to X, Y, and Z. You wouldn't have to worry about, you just need to eliminate those ones. And it triggers a true immune response. That's that's the difference. A, a person who has a leaky gut is going to be sensitive to everything. And they're going to have to remove a lot of stuff and heal the gut up before they can really determine whether or not they're sensitive to that food. Now we can actually just take your blood, it's a blood sample, and send that off to the lab, and they will tell us about a, a true lymphocytic um, immune response 
and that is actually kind of the the gold standard. Well, and that's just a stepping stone. So treat the person and not the pest, because. I I look beautiful on food sensitivity tests now, but I will get hives if I eat shrimp. Yeah. So. And we're, we're actually going to test her again because we haven't quite been able to figure out the trigger. So there's a food that she is eating in combination that, that flares up her knuckle and causes an immune reaction, kind of like a, a rheumatoid type of response. And so it's going to be fascinating to see if this actually determines that. Um, because we know that, and this is another thing that the well, test does. Well, the test tests for food colors. It tests for all kinds of things that they add to food and convenience foods. So we'll be able to tell not only like red meat and stuff like that, but is it a component in the red meat? Go ahead. Sorry, I cut y'all. Or is it the grain they're feeding the red meat? Yeah. Either way, I don't never like red meat, and so I don't really eat it. Now I don't eat it at all. Yeah, because if she wants to, to really, <laughs> she really wants to piss off her knuckles and start an inflammatory cascade in her body, go eat red meat. And she will absolutely fire right up and so that's the that's the big thing about food sensitivity testing and that's one of the reasons why I have patients all the time ask me hey will you run a food sensitivity panel and I I don't we don't we don't typically do that and that's just because they're so horribly inaccurate and these seem to be better so we're, we're running a few tests on select patients and we're running some tests on ourselves and then we will bring this out to the public because if it can shorten that learning curve that the elimination diet has that would be a very nice benefit to you the patient because it's going to take a you know we say it's a 23 day process and you get to start to reintroduce foods at two weeks but it, it really is a back and forth. I mean, we have patients that are going on two and three months trying to figure stuff out. We have a patient who's sensitive to, we finally figured out that she's sensitive to um, sucralose, the uh, the additive in, in a lot of your powdered foods and your workout stuff and those things. And it would bloat her to the point that she looked pregnant. I've always heard of these reactions. I'd never seen this reaction. And she showed me pictures. And that was truly amazing. <clears throat> yeah. Well, I looked at the, we do a thing called chronometer. So in the beginning, we like to really monitor what people are eating and the reactions they have. And as we look at those food logs, and it's pretty simple. If you're eating something, you can go to it and you can type in in the database what it is. And generally, it's all been crowdsourced by this time. Then it all pops up and it's really easy. But we saw a pattern that when she would eat these powders and potions that within 30 minutes to an hour, she was bloated. Um, and painfully so. We've also seen... And we had one patient who was sensitive to monk fruit. <laughs> and that's a rare, I mean, it's really rare that something just pops out like that. And that's what we are hoping this test will take that learning curve from, you know, that long to that long. Anything else you want to add to that stuff? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's something that we constantly are looking out for for our patients to kind of make this this process shorter and less tedious. <laughs> and so with that all being said, we're going to get to our dinners and then we got to go pick Miss Gracie up. So sorry for those of you that look for Libby. She's not with us tonight. And Gracie's not going to pop in either because she's not with us tonight. But um, if anybody's interested on some information, I do have 
some information from the manufacturer on food sensitivities and actually on the uh, MRT and on the lymphocytic tests, uh, go ahead and hit us up and I will be happy to email that to you so you can educate yourself on this in this process. So with that all being said, you all have a, oh, hold on. What are you doing for the nursing home? probably ought to tell them that and ask for some help <laughs> oh if you're local we are going to get blankets for all hope hopefully we will get blankets for all of their beds because they just love that so we are um, hoping to get 150 blankets for beds and soft cozy colorful ones so we can brighten up their world and those people are truly forgotten and Some of them, a lot of them are, a lot of them are. Yeah, and so when you bring them something or give them something, it just, they come alive. Quite literally, they come alive because a lot of them just are in this depressed vegetative state, <laughs> I almost call it so. And that's, that, if you have a chance, you can send those to the clinic or you can hit us up and we would be happy to pick some up um well, if, if you want to donate she'll go shop for you and if you are not close then go buy a blanket and just walk into a random nursing home and make a friend yep they'll love it and i promise you you will get more joy out of it than you probably give have a great week evening